Here we go. All right, so today I'm going to talk about spontaneous sex reversal in chickens. So you have males and you have females, obviously, um, and so you have your primary sex characteristics. So for females, that primary sex characteristics are what's on the inside. So for females, that's ovaries, the vagina, the follicles. For males, it's the testicles, the vas deferens, and the sperm production. Um, but then you also have your secondary sex characteristics. So that's what's on the outside. That's what we see. So for roosters, it's that they have a larger body, comb, and waddle. Hens, the comb is, and waddle is usually lighter in color and smaller. Um, the comb can actually fall over and kind of be flopped over on the side. Roosters have a longer spur, which is a little piece on the back of their legs. Um, and hens either don't have this at all or it's very small. Um, both um, genders have main tail feathers, but the males have those sadder, saddle feather, feathers that can kind of curve and be longer. Um, and in brown chickens, they look really pretty, but um, they can be different colors. But those are your secondary sex characteristics. So what I'm talking to you about today is the sex reversal. So that's when you have a hen that looks like this. See how the waddle or the combs kind of flop to one side and the waddle's, waddle's small. Um, this is also a hen. This hen used to look exactly like this one a week ago. And the other day we were walking around and heard a crow and realized that now this hen had grown a bigger comb and a bigger waddle. It's now standing erect and spreader. It actually actually has the saddle feathers, but every time we let go of her, she tried to fly away, so I don't have a good picture of those. Um, she grew a spur, and she's a lot bigger. Um, so this, what once looked like a hen, is still primarily sex characteristically a hen, but she looks like a rooster. So how does this happen? So it's not very common. It doesn't happen very often. Um, like it's the name suggests it's spontaneous, nobody can really predict it or make it happen, but it's caused by the functional ovary being damaged. So birds and chickens have two ovaries, but only one is functional, um, and it's their left one. Their right one never actually develops. It's just kind of there and regressed. Um, so when the left ovary somehow gets damaged, whether it's through cysts or tumors, or physical damage, whatever the case may be, um, the right ovary then starts to proliferate in the absence of the left ovary and become, becomes what's called an ovotestis. It's called an ovotestis because it's been seen to grow tissue that resembles an ovary, but it's also been seen to have tissue that resembles a, um, a, test, a testes. Sometimes it can have both, if it resembles an ovary and just an ovary, then when they dissected these birds to research them more, um, they've actually contained eggs in them. And if it resembles only a testes, then it can actually contain sperm. But because the, when this ovary was developed in the embryo, that sperm or those eggs have nowhere to go. Um, and so they're just kind of sitting in this now working right ovary. Um, I don't know what happens if they have both. Nobody's really written about that. Um, if it has both the characteristics of an ovary and a testis. Um, but the bird is still genetically female. It looks phenotypically male, but it obviously doesn't grow testicles and start producing sperm all of a sudden and is now able to um, fertilize eggs. So it's still genetic genetically female. Um, there's no record of a male reversing to a female. Um, so, but like I said, this isn't very common and the only research done is when this happens in research facilities like the one I'm in. Um, if this happens in some, like this is an example of it happening in somebody's backyard. I guess her name was Lulu and this was her before and this was her after her transformation. But, um, so if this happens in somebody's backyard coop, it's cool, it's fun, it's interesting. If this happens in the industry, especially in the like egg production industry, there's really no use for these birds anymore. The industry kind of gets rid of them, finds a place for them to go, or sadly sacrifices them because uh, they don't produce eggs anymore, so the industry has no use for them. Um, and they can't really, they weren't bred for meat production, so they can't really go and use them for meat very easily. Um, so 
For our research, the chicken that had this happen, um, we're doing research in laying hens, so we don't really have a use for her anymore. So for educational purposes, since there's not a lot of research done on this, we decided to sacrifice and dissect her. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, we decided to uh, sacrifice her and dissect her. So if you're squeamish, the next pictures aren't very pleasant. But this is a normal hen. This, um, it's labeled, these are what normal ovaries would look like, and these are what the normal ovary ducts would look like. The ovaries are yellow, and they're large, and they're, the ovary ducts are pink, and um, bigger. So this is from a normal hen. This is what it looks like in a hen that has um, had a sexual, sex reversal. So these are the regressed ovaries. They're a lot smaller. They're not yellow anymore because they're not producing any eggs. Um, and these are the regressed oviducts. They're about the same size. This is a far away picture, um, and this is a small, uh, closer up, but they're about the same size. Um, this, all the yellow is fat. So like I said, as the roosters are naturally bigger than the hens, so as these hens get, have this sex reversal, they actually grow bigger and can, gain a lot more fat. So all of this is the fat that this hen had gained versus like there's not much fat in this one. Um, so yeah, it's, I just thought it was really cool because we had one happen in our lab and um, I thought that everybody should oh, watch it Oh, excellent, yeah. I, get, I don't think I've heard of that before. <clears throat> um, anybody have any questions? Yeah, you look at the audience <clears throat> for questions. You yeah. Uh, when you said that they genetically would remain female, but phenotypically became male, do you mean just secondary? Characters? Yeah, so like their primary sex characteristics are still female, but their secondary sex characteristics are then male. Okay. And they must be producing testosterone during yeah. the reversal because that comb is mm -hmm. testosterone dependent. So from what I understand, they only become phenotypically male if that right ovary has at least some kind of tissue resembling a test. Yeah, and it's got to make testosterone because yeah. you could take any chick, I used to do this for experiments for other reasons, I could put testosterone on the outside of a comb, mm -hmm. even a young chick, and make it grow, you know, way before they even grow. It's very testosterone dependent. So if you know a tissue like that is growing, there's somebody's making testosterone. Neat. So, like, what if you had a thousand chickens? Would this like happen once, or you need more? You know what I mean? I'm just kind of getting at what I know. We have about a thousand chickens. So, I mean, this is one out of a thousand. Yeah. Is that a good thing to remember? One out of a thousand, or this you know what I mean? This is actually. So, the postdoctor that I work with—that's her name. Her name is Ryan. She's great. Um, she's actually had two of these. So, she had her. She did her graduate, her master's here as well, and she did a. Uh, a research project like this where she had a large number of chickens and she actually had one do this also and now she's in her postdoctorate after her PhD and this is her second